So you've got a property in your sights and now you need to know, hey, what's this property worth and is it a deal at the price the seller wants? That is an excellent question and valuing a property, also known as comping, is really a huge difference between an investor that's advanced and professional, that does a lot of deals, and an investor that's really just fumbling about and doesn't know what they're doing. So let me show you exactly how we value properties at Key Glee so you guys can do the same thing and help you do lots of deals. So there are two main ways that we can comp, right? We can either use an auto comping service or a manual comping service. Now, I will say this. Newbies tend to use auto comping services, which is fine. And then more professional investors will always use manual comping services, right, to pull their numbers. So we will heavily rely on manual comping services, but I wanted to cover these as well. Auto comping services are basically machine learning or AI based. And you go onto a website, you type in the address, and it gives you a number of what it estimates the value of the house is. Now that can be super valuable if you're on the phone with a seller and you just need a quick idea of what the house might be worth, right? That's why it's worth mentioning here. Some of the main ones are Zestimate, so the Zillow's Estimate. You'd go onto Zillow and that's where you'd get that. Redfin or Nerd Wallet, right? All of those will, will give you an estimated value for your property. Now it's not a surefire value and it's not the one we want to use as professionals, but it can be a quick glance to figure out what a property might be worth. Quick caveat here, don't say, if you're talking with a professional real estate investor, do not say, but the Zestimate says, if you're, if, you're, if you're going back and forth on price, that will make you look like a total newbie. So don't do that. Right? But it can be a quick reference. For manual comping services, there's a few main ones. right? So uh, the MLS, if you're a licensed agent, you have access to the MLS, and that's what a lot of investors use for comping. Now, most of us aren't, uh, aren't licensed, but guess what? The MLS actually isn't even the fastest way to comp properties, the, most fa the fastest and most efficient. There are other services out there. So CoreLogic is another great service. It will actually give you an auto comp and then also the real comps for you to use your own brain to calculate, right? And, so, and then lastly is Zillow comps. Now, okay, there's a big difference between Zillow comps and the Zestimate, right? Huge, huge difference. So Zillow comps are actually sold active and pending properties in your area around your subject property, right? That is, believe it or not, our preferred method for comping, specifically on the Zillow app, right? Where there's a really handy map. You can type in the address, uh, you can go to the map and click around to really value a property quickly. And I'll show you exactly how we do that here in a second. But this is where we wanna hang out. We wanna hang out in the manual comping section. So for license, we can use MLS. Not my favorite, but possible. If we want to pay for it, right, pay for the, for the data, or we're in a remote market, right, we want better data, we can use CoreLogic. If we want free data that's also good, effective, and easy to access, that's where I'd recommend Zillow Comps. So the way we value properties is done in six main steps. So the first step is know the subject property. How many square feet, how many beds, baths, right, is there a pool, is there parking, what type, garage, uh, is it slab parking, all of that fun stuff. So get to know your subject property first. Then from there, we move on to step two, which is find an ARV comp. Now, ARV stands for after repaired value, which means it's the house that's already been painted, already been renovated, already got new carpet or whatever, and looks beautiful, right? It looks absolutely fantastic. So since we're not looking for current value, we're looking for ARV, what's super nice, we're generally gonna start by looking for what's the most expensive thing that is sold in that subdivision, right? In that area right around our property. Once we've found that ARV comp, that really nice property that's already fixed up that's sold for a high amount, that's when we move on to step number three, which is adjust for differences. So let's say the ARV comp that we found has a pool and ours does not, right? If we're in an area where a pool is worth, let's say, $10,000, then we want to adjust what we think ours is going to be worth once it's all fixed up by that $10,000. So if ours, if our uh, ARV comp, let's say, is $390,000 and has a pool, and ours is the exact same besides the fact that it doesn't have a pool and ours is currently still ugly because we haven't fixed it up yet, then we would say that our ARV is 380, right? So tentatively, that's where we would mark our ARV, right? After repaired value, once it's all fixed up, our subject property is all fixed up, is 380. After we've adjusted for differences, we'll move on to number four, which is confirm ARV and comp through other solds. So we found our one ARV comp. Now we want to make sure, okay, does this kind of hold up? If we look at other properties in the neighborhood that have sold, 
you know, and we make same thing, kind of same thing adjustments, does it still hold up, right? Meaning, if there's another property that's also a really nice ARV property, but for whatever reason sold for 340, that would make me doubt that ours might be worth 380. But if we look around and we find out like, oh, yeah, there, there's another property that's similar that sold for 340, but it's all, you know, it's old school renovations, right? So it's beat up, you know, carpet's 10 years old, that type of stuff. Uh, then we say, oh yeah, well, it makes sense that ours would be worth 380 if it was a lot nicer than this one, but the same property, right? So we want to confirm off of other solds. Then we want to confirm off of pending properties, right? So pending properties are currently under contract, but have not closed yet. Now the tricky part with pending properties is we don't know what they're actually under contract for. We just know that they were listed for a certain amount and that now they're under contract. So if a property was listed for let's say $400,000, right, in this scenario, it was listed for $400,000 for two weeks and then went under contract, I would guess that it went under, for, went under contract for somewhere around $400,000 just because it was only a two week window. But let's say it's been listed for three months, right, for $400,000 and then goes under contract I might think to myself, okay, maybe it went under contract more for like 385, right? 380. There probably was some discount given. And we won't know what that discount is until it's sold, right? And records as sold. So we're not going to take these for, you know, 100%, you know, if it went under contract for 400, it's under contract for 400, but we want them to make some general sense. We wouldn't want an ARV property uh, listed for 290 going under contract. It would be like, why wait a second, <laughs> like, why, why didn't that sell instantly when it hit the market, and why did they list it for so low, right? What's the confusion here? Uh, we would want to see it, you know, somewhere around what we would expect it to be at considering our ARV comp. And then finally, actives, right? So, sure, we have all these sold comps, maybe we have some pending comps, uh, but we want to look at the actives as well. Now, the actives and pendings are not nearly as useful as sold. So, sold is gold. Pending is maybe some silverish, and then actives can be your bronze, right? The thing you're going to go to last. Actives, you just want to look at to make sure the market hasn't shifted drastically uh, recently. So let's say, let's say there's an active right now. Our ARV comp sold for 390. We think ours is our ARV or after repaired value is 380. But there's active properties that are completely renovated right now, listed for 310, not selling. That tells me something has changed in the market over the past few months. Maybe a large employer moved out. Uh, something has shifted in that market. So I would want to look further into that. What I would really like to see, though, is that the actives are actually higher than my ARV comp. So my ARV comp is 390, but the actives are at 425, 415 for rent per, like perfectly renovated properties. Cool. So those are our six steps. Now let's actually dive in, uh, hop onto the mobile Zillow app where I'll show you guys Uh, how to walk through together comping a property and going through these six steps. All right, so the first thing you want to do is go to the App Store or Google Play Store or whatever, your, uh, whatever store <laughs> you go to for apps on your device, uh, on, your, on your phone. But once you're there, type in Zillow and then you'll see two different apps. So you're going to see the Zillow Real Estate app and then you're also going to see the Zillow Rentals app. Uh, you want the Zillow Real Estate app. So make sure you download that one. It's the one with the cool little blue icon there. Once you do that goodness, then go ahead and click on open and it's going to open the app for you. Now it'll take you to a page uh, that looks a little different than this. Since I've already been using the app, mine shows up differently. Uh, but what you're going to want to do is click on the cool little search icon and then type in an address. Uh, and you're going to type in your subject property address. Remember the first step is we want to get to know our subject property. So I've kind of cheated a little bit. I have an address pre-populated here for us <laughs> to, just to make it easy. Uh, but cool. So once you've done that, uh, you can see that it says uh, right underneath the address there, it's a three bed, two bath, 2,056 square feet. You can also see that, that it just, uh, it sold in um, March of 2020. Uh, that was actually us that was transacting on that deal. Um, normally, you know, it's not your property when you're comping it, it's not going to have recently sold. But sometimes it is, and that's good to know. So we know it's a three bed, two bath, 2,056 square feet. And let's take a quick peek at the pictures here on Zillow. Now, these pictures are pulled from the MLS, so sometimes they're dated. Generally, you want to try and get these pictures directly from your seller uh, or supplier. But we can see that it has a pool here, which is great. 
Ooh, and then if you look at the front, the street view here, you can see that they've enclosed the garage, right? So you've got the slab parking, but then you don't have a garage. It looks like it's enclosed. I would be curious to know if that actually makes it more than 2,000 square feet. So that's something I would check with the seller or the county assessor with. Check the county assessor sketch and see if it shows that additional square feet because that could be uh, a value add for us there. Uh, but definitely it looks like probably no garage uh, or they enclose that garage. Cool. Awesome. You can also scroll down to get more information here. So we see it's a 6,200 square foot lot and the year build is 1972. Uh, so the next step is to actually more or less scroll down on the photo and it will take you to the comp map. So when you first get here, the tag that is green is going to be your subject property. So you'll see the 294, uh, 294K little tag in green. That's our subject property. And so we can see like this is our neighborhood right in here. Now to have it... To get this set up so it comes up like this, you want to click on the red, yellow, purple, all button there in the top uh, top left and make sure that you turn on the toggles for full, for sale, for rent, and recently sold, and then click done. Once you've done that, you want to move over to the top right and click on more and then scroll down. Uh, I like to scroll all the way down to the bottom and turn on listed or sold in last 12 months. So you can see that's on here. And I also like to turn on satellite view on map, right? Which it will default just to a regular map. I like satellite view because we can really see where the subdivision changes by looking at uh, the types of roofs that the houses have, uh, which is kind of nice. Now, if you also wanna, if you wanna add additional things, like you only wanna look at uh, properties plus or minus 200 square feet of your subject property, you can do that as well by adjusting square footage uh, and things like that. So anyhow, once we've done that, we click apply and then it takes us right back to our comping property map. And now it would have everything populated. So now that we know our subject property, we've set up our map, we've set up the app, we want to look for our ARV comp, right? So remember, that's, that's going to be one that's sold for a lot of money, more or less, right? That's really nice. Uh, so I see this 435 over here, so I'm going to click on that. Uh, and I see that it's 435, four bedroom, two bathroom, 2,236 square feet, so a little bit bigger. Uh, it's got that tile roof, but I'm guessing probably built around the same time. Uh, but I wanna keep, just kind of keep cruising around here looking. I've got a, a 451 here. And I'm also making sure not to cross any major roads, kind of stay within that same subdivision. Uh, so there's this 451 here that's 2,000 square feet, right? So our two, ours is 2,056 uh, square feet. This is a four bed, two bath. Ours is a three two. Uh, this one sold for 451. So we're like, oh, well, that's pretty sweet. Let's take a look at this bad boy. Uh, so first thing I want to do is I want to see if this thing's renovated, right? So I'm going to take a look at the pictures. You can see that here it's on a corner lot. So it's probably a lot premium, a bigger lot than most of the other ones in the neighborhood. Um, it look, yep, nicely renovated. Uh, nice open layout there, which is really popular right now. Um, and it looks like a really, really nice, recent, clean renovation, right? So this is a great ARV comp. They did, it looks like they did a nice job here. Uh, I like that a lot. Cool. So now let's see if they have a pool in the backyard. I noticed that they have a garage, right? Ours does not have a garage. So we have to account for that. And they have a pool. We have a pool. So that is equal. Uh, the one thing that they have that we don't is that lot premium, right? Ours is 6,200 square foot lot. I'm guessing this one's more like nine, yeah, 9,417 square feet, right? Built around the exact same year. Uh, and they also have parking. So what I would do is I would take $10,000 off um, the 451 for the lot premium, right? So now that drops our subject property's ARV to 441. And then I would take another $10,000 off because they have a garage and we don't. And that drops our ARV to around 431, right in that, right in that general area. Cool. So now that I've got my ARV comp and I've adjusted it so that our ARV we anticipate being 431, let's go confirm it with pending and, or with other sold comps first and then with pending and with listed, uh, other listed properties. So I'm going to come back here. I want to make sure I don't lose my subject property, right? So go back here. That was a green one, which is the uh, 294. And now I just want to confirm it by looking at other comps, right? So I'm going to look at, let's look at this 390 here. So 4 to 2,208 square feet. Uh, let's look at this guy, see if he's renovated. Um, so not renovated. So that makes me feel great, right? That's right in line because you always get a premium, right? If it's renovated and a $40,000 premium makes total sense. Let's look at this 225. Okay, so the 225 is 1476 square feet, so much smaller. So I, I feel fine about that. Uh, let's look at this. 
four twenty three five hundred. Ooh, so this one is at twenty one twenty square feet. It's also a three two. Looks nice. Let's see if this guy's renovated. Has a garage. Has a pool. Uh, okay, and so kind of an older school. Uh, so nice property. You know, it's nice and clean, but not a current what's currently in for renovation. So I would say kind of an old school remodel. So I think that falls totally falls right in line uh, with with our value giving our ARV. If ours was really nice, being four thirty, right? Uh, I think that falls right in line with that. So now let's look at let's look at some. This one's coming soon. It's also smaller. That's fine. Let's look at some other. Try and find some actives or some pendings in here to look at. Let's see what we've got. Okay, so this four hundred over here. Uh, so it's four hundred. It's listed. And it is 2,200 square feet. So if this is beautifully renovated inside, then I would want to adjust my price. Um, so let's look at it. And so I'll tile. You know, obviously that's not a renovated bathroom. So this is like, yeah, so this is rent ready, but definitely not renovated. So uh, their asking price of 400, I think, is right online. Because if it was beautifully renovated, I'd expect them to be asking more like 440. Uh, and that lines up perfectly with... Um, our property. In fact, here's here's basically that 440 right next to it. It's a little bit bigger that is renovated. Um, cool. Sweet. Uh, let's look for another active here, see if we can find one other active or pending to, uh, to confirm what we're looking at. Uh, this was that house for sale. Okay, this one's much smaller and 370. So that lines right up, right? It's, that's perfect. I would say that's perfectly lined up. And then let's look um, yeah, that seems to be kind of all the actives that we really have hanging out in here. Uh, and then, of course, those purple uh, are, you know, $2,000 and uh, $2,200 uh, tags. Those are for rentals. So, cool. Awesome. So, I feel I feel confident ARV in this one would be probably somewhere between uh, 425 to 4, uh, 435 And I think calling it a 430 ARV uh, is, is right on the money. So, sweet. That's That's how we do it. That's it for this video, guys. If you're serious about learning real estate investing, making it your profession, and becoming really a professional at it, uh, I would highly recommend that you subscribe to this channel. You can do so by clicking this button right here. Uh, please like, comment, uh, and let us know any questions that you have, and we'll answer them when we start our next video next week. Thanks so much, guys, and see you in the next video.